Coming to you from a studio somewhere. Up there. It's Enough Already Radio with Fingers Malloy and Tracy O'Connor. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And once again, we're here back for another Enough Already podcast. I'm Fingers Malloy. Tracy L. Connors is here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Tracy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you too, Fingers. How's Tracy L. Connors? I'm great. I love talking about myself in the third person, you know. <laughs> Nothing gives me more pleasure. Doesn't Donald Trump do that from time to time? Didn't he used I, to? I, you might be correct. I'm going to go with sure. If it's good enough for the President of the United States, Tracy. And it's good enough for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, do you want a diet update before we get to the sure. news? I fell off the wagon. Last weekend, we went to Michigan to celebrate. A Fingers Moy Sr. turned 80 years old. Wow. Yeah, so we threw a party for him at his favorite watering hole. Good for him. Did you play some Keno? I did play some Club Keno. I lost. Okay. I think it's rigged. Yeah. But I love the Club Keno in the Michigan bars. I wish other states would do that. I'm sure they do, but my state doesn't. Do you have Club Keno in Pennsylvania? I don't believe so. It's great. They have two or three TVs in every bar dedicated to the Michigan lottery, and you can just play. Every three minutes, they have a drawing. Wow. <clears throat> Dollar pull. Okay. Is Keno like bingo? It's it's like the lotto. And okay. a little like bingo too. So you so, pick numbers or something, right? Yeah, it's there are eighty numbers, one through eighty. You can pick up to ten numbers or you can pick one number. And what you win is based on how many numbers you play and how many numbers that you play come in. Okay. So I normally play five numbers. If you get five out of five, or if you if all five numbers get picked that you picked, you win four hundred and ten dollars. Wow. So that's happened. What to if me you go once. ten for ten? Um, I think it's a hundred thousand. Oh wow. Not positive on that. But you know, that's 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 pretty hard to do. Yes. So every three minutes they do a drawing, it's a buck a draw. Mm-hmm. And it, I get my casino fix <laughs> without having to go to the casino. So that's fun. Lovely. Yeah. But we, well, we threw a big party for him uh, at his favorite watering hole. And uh, side note on that, too, his actual birthday was Friday, June mm-hmm. 1st. Mm-hmm. So then he went out with his friends again. And nice. he's 80 years old and he's drinking whiskey with his friends at sure. the bar. Why not? Not bad, right? No. So I fell off the wagon mm-hmm. at the, at the party. Did you bounce a couple times, or no? It was a th- more of a thud. Yeah. So I had beer, and then I had some pizza, and then that led to more pizza and bread and bread. <laughs> but I'm back on the wagon again. Mm-hmm. So I'm still down. I I was down twelve pounds. I'm down ten. Okay. So minor relapse. Right. It's hard to completely eliminate carbs from your diet, which is what I'm trying to do uh, when 87% of your diet has been carbs for the last 30 years. Mm. Bread, bread, sugar, sugar, bread, bread, sugar, sugar, bread. Donuts. <laughs> I, I got through National Donut Day without a donut. I had two. Did you really? The ones I make that you keto made? donuts every week. Uh huh. I, I still have to make your cheesecake. Yes, that's the killer. I'm going to make one of those today. And it lasts you a week. Oh, it lasts me a little more than a week. It's huge. So instead of cutting it into eight, I cut it into sixteen. Why not cut it into eight? If because if there are no four hundred calories a slice. <laughs> but if there are carbs. Yeah, but I, you still have to watch calories. Bah! <laughs> okay. Well, you got well, for me. The t- yeah, for the time being, don't you worry about the calories. Just try to get right. the ketosis. Yeah. I mean, you got me onto that. You, you, your dad drinks the diet root beer and whole whipping cream. 
Yep. You, you ever look at the calories on whole whipping well, cream? Yes, and I differentiate from him because he's like, I use about a quarter of a cup. And I'm like, I use a t- <laughs> tablespoon maybe. And it's 50 calories on that. Quarter of a cup. Oh my God. It's oh, awesome. Good Lord. No. And I only do it occasionally. Mm. No, that's why I make the donuts. I started putting the whole whipping cream in my coffee. Yes. Which is good. With the little mm-hmm. uh, Splenda. Mm-hmm. Which I, I'm not sure. I, I believe Splenda has carbs. Yes, it does. Ugh. Damn it. It's, it. it's not that many. And I told you, you should try. There's a new fake sugar called Swerve, which is excellent. But it has some carbs, too. Ugh. But that's what I, 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 I stop myself when I get upset about that. Mm. Uh, really comparing my old diet to beating myself up over having a little bit of Splenda in my coffee. Right. Ridiculous. Well, it's funny that you beat yourself up over that, but you'll, you'll totally justify a Guinness. <laughs> I know. I thought Guinness only, <laughs> I thought Guinness had less than five no, carbs. Stay away from beer. <sighs> you can have any liquor that you would like. Yeah. I just Except started for the flavored beer. vodkas. Well, who does that? Well, Ugh. I know. I went to a liquor store the other day and I to pick up some bourbon, and apparently they have stuff like whipped cream flavored vodka. Oh, I've had that before. For what? Why? Do you just drink it on the rocks? No, I was mixing it with Red Bull. Oh God! It was quite delicious. So, what does it taste like? A rock and rye, or a? It tastes like whipped cream. No, I mean with the Red Bull. Oh, I don't. It just tastes like a sugary, fake sugary <laughs> concoction. Sugary mess. I mean, it was years ago. Oh. I don't recall, and um, I'm looking at my bar right now, and there's not any fake flavored liquors on it. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. There should be only one flavor of vodka, and it's vodka flavored vodka. Correct. I have someone gave me a gag gift. Our our, our buddy Ash Scow mm. a couple of years ago gave me a gag gift. She gave me a fifth of Fireball because she knows how I feel about flavored whiskeys. Same as vodka. There's only one flavor of whiskey that's acceptable, and it's whiskey flavored whiskey. So the cinnamon crap that everyone seems to be crazy <laughs> about. She she gave me a fifth of that. Had is is collecting dust right now mm. on my on my counter. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. You can send it off to college with your daughter when she goes. Oh. I'll disown her. If she drinks flavored color, uh, flavored whiskey. Well, you can just make her the most popular girl in the dorm the first night. <laughs> and they and they put that stuff now. They've they've got containers that go right in the freezer with a tap mm-hmm. for fireball. Oh, I've seen adults do it at the bar. Let's get shots of fireball. Nope. We I'm can't out. be friends anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they should just call that stuff, I want to get into a fight. <laughs> Whiskey. Oh, come at me, bro. Whiskey. <laughs> That's who I picture drinking that kind of stuff is the Jersey Shore cast. <laughs> yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's the sitch on his seventh shot of fireball. <laughs> yeah, look out. <laughs> this isn't going to end well. Oh, No, man. but back in the 90s, people would drink uh, shots of hot damn. Oh, I've never heard of that. It, it's cinnamon schnapps. Oh, okay. So like Goldschlager? Yeah, uh, but it was more like the hot cinnamon. Like, uh, imagine big red okay. gum in liquor form, and that's what hot damn was. And now they've got this fireball parading as whiskey, and it tastes like hot damn mm. with more alcohol than hot <laughs> damn in it. Uh, so, so you know what it tastes like? Oh, I've had it before. Oh, oh, I l- listen. <laughs> Someone put a shot in front of me once. As a joke. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I tried it. And I was like, I cannot believe you people drink this crap. <laughs> I mean, you've never done that? I mean, dr- had a drink of the... Fa- I've had Zima before. Oh, yeah. I had Zima. 
I don't drink Zima, but somebody put it in front of me, it, you know, back in the 90s, gave it a go. Like, oh, my God, how do you people drink this crap? Mad Dog 2020. Yep, had that, too. Delicious. Malt liquor. St. Ives, yep. It's good stuff. I, one time I went to a a 7-Eleven in Michigan, and this was back in the early 90s, and they had Colt 45 Ice. Nice. In a 22 ounce bottle for 79 cents. Oh, you have to get that. Right. But the funny thing was, in the next cooler, there was a bottle, a 20 ounce bottle of Aquafina for 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> it was cheaper than the water. Unbelievable. I don't know how people drink that crap. Like the hipster thing, I don't know if it's still the hipster thing, but for a while there, you'd go to college bars. And Paps Blue Ribbon would be on tap. Yep. Have you had the Paps Blue Ribbon? Oh, yeah. When I lived in Oregon, that's what everybody was drinking. Like Ugh. In the house that I lived in, my roommates would buy that crap. It's god awful. Yeah. Well, lucky I had stopped drinking beer before I was out there, mm-hmm. so I, I didn't ever participate. I remember one night I went to go grab a soda for myself and a beer for one of my roommates, and I opened it the beer thinking it was my soda and took a swig it was a paps and i just spat it all over the backyard <laughs> like this stuff is horrific my my brother-in-law has a bar by his house and we walked in one day and they had paps blue ribbon cans for 50 cents a piece that's too much well i figure okay what the hell i'll try it's 50 cents i'll try it mm-hmm. and i took one sip of it and it was ridiculous re- ridiculously cold i mean ice cold damn near had flakes of ice in it when i took mm-hmm. a drink of it took a sip i was like oh my god where's this been all my life if i can get this drunk I, 50 cents a can on this this is oh, i could do this the beer got one degree warmer <laughs> and it was all over <laughs> it, was, it was oh this is awful it's amazing the kind of crap you can tolerate if it's ice cold but i don't know how people drink it or gold Schla- gold Schlager was a thing. Mm-hmm. Probably was it a thing when you were in college? Mm-hmm. Were you? Are there pictures of you walking around with a fifth of Gold Schlager on campus? No. 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 For some reason, I don't remember why, but I went through phases. So, like in my freshman year, I was drinking gin and tonics almost exclusively. Mm. And then by the time my senior year, when I could actually go to the bars, that's when the uh, Long Island iced teas became my drink of choice. We were talking on uh, the other show I do, the the, the Snark Factor. You, you remember the Snark Factor? I do. Uh, apparently, a study came out recently that said uh, gin is perceived as the sexiest drink oh. of all is the it because drinks. Because of martinis, I I guess I immediately thought to myself, well, well, that must mean that. Hillary Clinton is considered sexy. <laughs> is that what we're going with? I, I, I've never understood. I had a, a buddy that loved. Uh, he, he went on a Bombay Sapphire mm. kick for a while. And so he poured one for me, a gin and tonic. And I thought, who put Lysol in this? Yeah. You got to get used to it. It's an acquired taste. So you there's were, some decent gin drinks. Gin and tonic I like. Tom Collins. Mm, I've had vodka Collins before. But not the, the Gin Collins. Mm. So the, that was your drink of choice your freshman year. Yeah, I don't remember what I did sophomore year. <laughs> and then junior year, I was in Venezuela. <clears throat> and so that drink was like Capraninas, which is basically vodka and a bunch of sugar and a bit of lime. That just sounds like a recipe for gaining 40 pounds. Yeah, well, and I also drank a lot of rum. They drink mm. rum down there, but yeah. um, they, they call it Ron, R-O-N. Like, what, people are ridiculous. What, was the food fantastic down there? I ate pizza almost every day. <laughs> I did. It's true. I ate pizza and gnocchi. I found an Italian restaurant, and I went there every single day after I figured out my host family was feeding me liver. Oh, God. And I was like, why is this steak so tough? And I'm like, what is this? And they told me, and I'm like, ah. Oh. I think I'll just go out to eat every day. It only costs about four dollars <laughs> to, to get a full meal at a bar. So, yeah. Did your parents flip out that you were were down there? I mean, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, when I came home and told them, I remember my father was like, you know that's a third world country, right? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. He's like, you're going to basically live in a Motel 6 for four months. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was. I mean, it was before it got really bad. Uh-huh. Right? It was just when Chavez had taken over, so... It was a little bit frightening. I think I've told you the story when we landed and they let our host families like stand on the tarmac as if we were. So it was almost like we were refugees coming home, <laughs> standing there anxiously waving at us. And then I get put into, you know, I, I meet my family and they had uh, five kids, but they only brought two of them to the airport. So it was a baby and then an, a nine year old. So I'm sitting in the back of like a cutlass or something with the nine year old who's just staring at me expectantly and then the mother sitting in shotgun with the baby on her lap and the father's driving and he's got a beer between his legs nice yeah and uh, i heard cars backfiring for the first time <laughs> and if you're not familiar with that sound you think it's gunshots gunshots yeah yeah so i was like holy hell i guess i maybe should have listened <laughs> but i got used to it did the the host father offer you a beer in the car on your way no no oh, that's rude Oddly enough. <laughs> now, this is before uh, Hugo. Well, he had taken, he had come into Na- office maybe a year prior. So he hadn't named himself president for life yet? <laughs> no, no, no. While, while we were there, they voted on a new constitution, which had a little loophole in it that allowed him to run consecutive terms. Prior to that, it was the presidential term was six years. Mm. And then you couldn't stand for reelection again. You had to wait out a six year term of somebody else and then you could run again. But he had been in for about a year, proposed a new constitution, which I believe was their 26th constitution. <laughs> so they're telling me all of this and I'm like, this is madness. And people were selling copies of the constitution on the street cause they have popular democracy. So everybody gets to vote, you know, it's one person, one vote, whatever. So they were all getting to vote on this. And uh, I read it and I find this loophole and I was like, wait a minute, how long has he been the president? And they're like, a year. And I'm like, okay. And if you see right here, it says this resets his term to zero. And then if you're president for seven consecutive years, you can run again. Do you see how that works out? They're like, oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> and then but- every night, you know, they'd interrupt. Um, they, they watched a lot of Friends. And it was all voiced over, which huh. is so terrible. <laughs> it was funny as hell for us. It's like friends and Seinfeld with voiceover. <laughs> and uh, they would preempt that so Chavez could talk on TV on every channel for however long he wanted to. And I just kept saying to the people there, I'm like, this does not bode well. This is not going to end in a <laughs> nice fashion. It's not going to be all wonderful. Everybody's going to have everything they ever dreamed of, which is what he's telling everybody, of course. Oh, no, no. He cares about us. Right. That's, okay. what, that's all that matters. He cares about the people, Tracy. He does. He tells us that every night, and we believe him. Okay. When he died, wasn't know. he worth like uh, $3 billion? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? He just owns everything. Right. We're sick of this. We're sick of that. It, it was. It's a wild place. And I wish they would clean it up because it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. But infrastructure was terrible. Ter- absolutely terrible. Well, you couldn't you couldn't flush toilet paper down the toilet, mm-hmm. could you? No, and that's true in most of South America, is my understanding. Oh, I mean, I did. I'm like, I'm not some kind of an animal. <laughs> you flush toilet paper, damn it! Wow, you're lucky you didn't get arrested for that. It's probably an arrestable defense or uh, offense now. No, but it was so gross because and their toilet paper was pink. And they just pile trash on the streets on trash day. So you would see these trash bags with little pieces of pink paper flying out of them. And you'd know exactly what that is. It's like, oh, this is so gross. Did you ever keep in touch after you Mm -hmm. moved back to the States with these people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm friends with some of them on Facebook. If I ever go on there and occasionally I'll just say, like, I hope you guys are doing okay. (laughs) Do they? Did they ever you say know. you were right, Tracy? <laughs> no, no. It was my host family that I basically talked to about that kind of stuff. And no, I, I became very friendly with these women that owned the Italian restaurant and then the staff there. So I still keep up with them sometimes. One of them's now living here. Mm. He's like, I got the hell out of there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, good for you, dude. Wow. Yeah, sad. 
Speaking of sad, we we got a lot of news this week. Yeah, we do. Some of it's sad, some of it's funny. <laughs> what do you want to talk about first? We'll make it all funny. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about the freak out over uh, Trump announcing an hour ahead of time that the job to watch the job numbers? Oh, yeah, come we could up? we could do that. <laughs> oh, this cracks me up so much. So I was watching the news on Friday morning, and I I'm not sure if I'm totally correct in this, but I've told you I can't sleep late anymore, which drives me insane. Mm-hmm. So some mornings I'm up by six, and I watch my favorite cartoon show. <laughs> So the one day I was watching it, I think it was the day that I got up and went to the gym in the morning because I'm now psychotic about that kind of stuff. So I'm watching my cartoons while I'm on the elliptical. Remind people what your cartoon show is. Oh, uh, Morning Joe. (laughs) So I'm watching the six o'clock hour while I'm at the gym, come home, take a shower, catch some of the seven o'clock hour. And then the eight o'clock hour comes around and it's a repeat of the six o'clock hour. And I thought to myself, I'm being ripped off. (laughs) I don't know if this happens every day or not. This is BS. Uh huh. So anyway, so I, on Friday I got a little. I was annoyed with them because of this, the switcheroo. And so I flipped over to Fox Business because it's like, oh yeah, the jobs report's coming out today. And on Fox Business, like although they do commercials for people that are masquerading as news segments, <laughs> so it's National Donut Day, and mm-hmm. then, so it's a like Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, and um, Burger King. I guess has some donut burger. Oh, no, that was ridiculous. All they, they had a burger hole punch. Yeah. So all they did was they punched a hole in a Whopper and said, Happy National Donut Day, and then you got a, a side slider. Yeah. And yeah. they punched a hole in the bun. Right. Like, great. And, and wow. the patty, from what I understand. I didn't so go this there is... because I'm on the Atkins diet. <laughs> well, yeah. You could have just had the patty. So... um I'm waiting for the job numbers to come out and they come out at 8:30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. They're embargoed. They've already been shown to a bunch of people the day before and for some reason we have to keep them under lock and key. Mm-hmm. And the market's open at what 9:9:30? Yes, I believe So it comes out before the market opens. So okay, they're going to get tipped off. So Trump tweets at 7:21 a.m. on Friday, looking forward to seeing the employment numbers at 8:30 this morning. And this is the biggest scandal of the day as far as the left media is concerned. And I, and um, I didn't realize it at the time because I would have flipped back over to MSNBC, but they might have been repeating the six o'clock hour so they wouldn't have been able to react to this in real time. But people went crazy. So like HuffPost has an article, Trump leaks sensitive info from the May jobs report, and that's a big effing problem. <laughs> what? So they start this story by uh, Ryan Gren Noble, uh, a president who's obsessed with stopping leaks, leaked extremely sensitive economic information about May's job report Friday morning <laughs> over an hour before the report was officially released. <laughs> oh, my God, it's catastrophic. What kind of damage do you think he did, Fingers? <laughs> it, it leaked it just by saying, uh, hey, I'm looking forward to the report. Yes. That's, that's, a, that's a leak? It's a leak. Wow. Yeah, I mean, th- this article in the Huffington Post is absolutely outrageous. But then Bloomberg, which is a fairly well-respected source, I guess, right? At least as far as markets are concerned. Yes. If you ever watch Bloomberg News, it's like there's more stuff going on on that screen than any other news <laughs> channel ever. It's every single market in the world's ticker is going. Right. Uh, they have one, uh, Trump's tweet. Tweets early on jobs data and Wall Street takes the hint. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Like Wall Street wouldn't have had a heads up. Like I said, I don't think the market opens until 930. So the job numbers come out at 830. So they still have an hour to do all their nefarious trading based <laughs> off of this information. So so they're saying that the dollars move pre jobs report was huge in comparison to how it typically <laughs> trades pre release. Oh, Lord. But in this article, I think they have. Uh, Preet, what's that guy's name? Preet Bahara, yeah. Who's um, he? He was fired by Trump, and he works as a former U.S. attorney in one of the Manhattan offices. I can't remember if he's Southern District or whatever, but he's been a nemesis of Trump's. Mm-hmm. So they're saying in this. <laughs> Former U.S. attorney, this is from the Bloomberg article, Preet Bahara appeared to call for congressional inquiry into the tweet. (laughs) 
saying that lawmakers had a quote the constitutional authority to investigate. <laughs> what the hell is there to investigate? Oh my God! Trump saw the job numbers the day before and decided to tweet an hour and t- and nine minutes before the report came out. He's excited about seeing it. We uh, special counsel, please. <laughs> the hell is wrong with these people? Losing their damn minds. Well, it's like they can't just be happy. The jobs reports ha- ended up being way better than anybody expected, which is. We're not used to that. Don't you remember every, it was almost like clockwork every month. They're like, oh, under Obama, the, the numbers are worse than expected. <laughs> well, usually they have to revise the numbers. Well, they still do that. So I think they revised April down a little bit, but March up or something. And I mean, I, I question this whole number thing anyway. There's no way they're accurately capturing everything no. possible. So these are just estimates, but still. You know, it was a two hundred thirty thousand new jobs. You know, the unemployment went down to three point eight. Uh, the only thing, like the labor participation rate, actually decreased, which is strange. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it's looking good. And I think I saw GDP estimates were four point seven percent or something, which is just crazy. So we can't possibly have that news dominate. So what can we fixate on? <laughs> and it's oh my God, Trump tweeted out an hour early. And now we have to have so, calling so, for congressional investigations. What was that? Uh, the journalist? Uh, mm. Someone has to be putting the, the narrative out there. I don't know if it's the DNC, but you, you saw that in HuffPo. Uh, CNN went ballistic. Oh, yeah, they all did. So, and- yeah, I don't know who, who's patient zero for this kind of thing. <laughs> Who is Typhoid Mary that's like, guess what? <gasps> that is classified information, and he just leaked it. Leaked it. Holy shit. Well, I think it's funny. Do you have that clip that I sent you? The GOP put yeah. out an ad on this, which is just... They've actually been doing fairly well with ads, and I thought this was brilliant. Well, that's what's funny. Whenever something like this pops up for at least a day... The mainstream media acts like no one owns a Google machine. Yes. <laughs> this has never happened before. <laughs> As if it was catastrophic to begin with. Right. Who cares? Honestly, they're just mad that the numbers are good. And they can't report that. Can you imagine? You know, and I hate playing this game, but can you imagine what the re- the reaction from the mainstream media would be if this were a an Obama jobs report? Well, the thing is, too, they've been playing this game where, oh, it's this is all thanks to Obama. Yeah. I saw my favorite cartoon character say that the other day. <laughs> Let's get real. This is all because of Obama. <laughs> and um, as Scott Adams has pointed out numerous times, he said, well, how far do you take that chain back? He said, well, this is all thanks to George Washington. <laughs> Honestly, well, it's like, for the most part, the American economy has grown. So how far back do you take that? Like who gets credit? But as soon as it goes into the shitter, is it still going to be Obama's fault? Oh, of course not. <laughs> right, exactly. No, absolutely not. Uh, here's the, the clip you're talking about. This is from the GOP. And they, their tweet, just so everybody has the setup, is today the media hyperventilated when Donald Trump released the monthly jobs report, and they dared us to find a president who had done this before. We did. This morning, he sent out this tweet, Brendan, looking forward to seeing the employment numbers at 8.30 this morning. But to send this tweet out one (laughs) hour before it becomes public, (laughs) the president gets that number the night before. That's exactly right. But we've never seen a president make any comment. I dare you. Go back and look. Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama. Find a president of the United States talking about tweeting, about communicating about the unemployment report before it came out. I dare you. We're going to get a jobs report at the end of this week, which probably will indicate we've lost at least another half million jobs. Tomorrow, we're expecting another dismal jobs report on top of the 2.6 million jobs that we lost last year. Today, we learned that in the previous week, the number of new unemployment claims jumped to 626,000. Tomorrow, we're expecting another dismal jobs report. On that point, are you expecting more bad numbers with the jobs report tomorrow? Uh, I don't expect good news. I dare you. Go back and look. (laughs) How dare that reporter ask about the jobs report at a White House press briefing before it comes out? 
he's abetting a felony. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is serious national security implications. I think Preet Bahar is right with that. We need a congressional investigation. <laughs> Maybe they can get Stephen Halper on it. Unreal. It's well, so pathetic. I mean, can you imagine thinking that that's what you should be talking about? How can you call it a leak? A leak? Yeah, he might have broken the law. I'm serious. That's what they're saying. This is a serious violation. Wow. No, I, and I don't know who's saying this in this HuffPo piece. They said it's clear the president doesn't take his responsibility to treat confidential data seriously. Says <laughs> Wolfers. I don't know who. Let me see who Wolfers is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's a market maybe analyst. Maybe he should have put but. the job jobs report on a private server. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't respect classified information. Okay. Yeah, it's highly sensitive. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Oh. This is God. so much fun to watch. It's pathetic. I just I keep waiting for somebody on live television to just drop dead from adrenal failure. <laughs> it's it's gonna have to happen at some some point. It's going to be a long six years for these people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, imagine what's going to happen if on the 12th, when that summit goes forward, even though we were all, to oh, it's off, it's over, he screwed everything up. You'd think one of these people would have read The Art of the Deal by now. But no. So just just imagine what it's going to be like if they come out of that summit with the Korean War is over and... The North has agreed to denuclearize. What are they going to do? I mean, they're going to say, oh, no, that's, they'll, you know, oh, sure, that's what they said, but they won't go through with denuclearization. Everybody knows that. Well, and that's fine if they would have been just as skeptical with every other administration when it comes to any kind of dealings with North Korea, because this is a typical move for North Korea, not to go this far, but claim that they want peace and then you know, secretly just like what, what Iran's doing right now mm -hmm. still moving towards a, 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 a becoming a nuclear nation yeah but there, but there, every... there isn't the skepticism if, if again can you imagine if the, the Obama administration had announced that they're going to have this huge summit and North Korea was talking about uh totally dismantling their nuclear program and they're going to have I, I, there would be orgasms on air right well i honestly think that that's what they expected the world to do when obama took office that everything would be peaceful and wonderful and everybody would just give up their weapons and it was going to be one giant john lennon song mm -hmm. that's why they gave him the peace the nobel peace prize without doing anything and so, and the other thing I expect them to do is um, say that Trump really had nothing to do th with this. This was all yep. no. They'll be like it's Moon, and um, and and Kim. That's it. It was the two Korean leaders. Well, Trump is just this idiot that happened to be there. Yeah, it's going to be happened. difficult to say the groundwork was laid during the Obama administration. Oh was yeah. <laughs> They'll find some way to wedge that in there. <laughs> really, diplomats have been working on this for for, for years. Mm -hmm. This is a great diplomatic effort. <laughs> oh well, good for the the digital media people over at the Republican Party for for coming up with that video. Yeah, it's so funny, and it's just at a certain point, though, it, it's really hard to make people deny reality that they're seeing around them. Yeah, you know, and and wages are going up now, and you know, it's funny because you'll see them admit that, and they'll be like, "Oh, unemployment's so low, we need to let in all these immigrants." <laughs> and you're like, "No," it, because then in the same breath they'll bitch about wages being, you know, stagnant. It's like, well, how do you drive up wages when unemployment is this low? That gives people leverage to leave their job and go look for more money somewhere else. Right. 
And, you know, I know your experience is a little bit different in the manufacturing realm because you work for a much larger company than I do. But we're going through that where I work. It's like we're going to have to start raising the, 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 you know, the beginning salary for people because there's so much competition now. Yeah, and you're also finding that the, the kind of people who um, are happy with factory work, also a, a lot of them happen to dabble in marijuana. Yeah. So you're finding a lot of manufacturers that are, are small, uh, you know, small scale manufacturers that may only have 50, 100, 150 employees. They, mm-hmm. they can't drug test. Right. Because if they do, <laughs> it eliminates... 75 percent of potential uh, employees so it's it's crazy sure and it's also a sticky situation because so many states have legalized it now are you going to tell your people you can't travel to that state and do something that's legal there and then come back to work that's really going to be interesting how this all plays out because you're exactly right because a lot of these states are actually catering they're they're encouraging marijuana tourists sure why not and it, wor- it worked for Amsterdam for years. Yeah, fly to Colorado. <laughs> Go to one of our marijuana boutiques. <laughs> then you can't smoke it anywhere, but come visit us. Yeah, that's the crazy thing, too. Well, uh, that's just the the, the slowness of, of government to catch up with <laughs> reality. Yeah. Yeah, I, you guys can have pop. You can't smoke it anywhere except your house. But let's have a tourist industry. <laughs> I I mean, I haven't, I've been to Vegas once since they legalized it and they had just legalized it. Uh, So what effect it has on or has had on hotels in Vegas, because people are going to ignore that. Of course, it's Vegas. Yeah. So people are going to smoke pot in their hotel rooms and people were smoking pot in their hotel rooms in Vegas before it was legal. But I, I, you know, and I know some of those people, uh, but they would do what they can or what they could to mask the the smell of marijuana smoke in their hotel room. Yes. Are, are people going to be like, oh, it's legal now. Hell with it. Mm-hmm. And just get a smoking room and openly smoke their pot in in a smoking room in Vegas? Of I, course. Of course they will. But yeah. it, it's it's funny. I you know, I I don't know much about Amsterdam. But I've been there. You you have been there? Mm-hmm. I mean, they have cafes where you can go in and, and smoke yes. marijuana. I, I mean, is yeah. that that's got to be where we're headed, right? If, you, if yeah, you're going to yeah. say you can't smoke it in public, but we want you to to visit our fine state to smoke marijuana, you just got to know someone mm-hmm. and and smoke it in in their in their homes. So it's got to come to the point where they're going to have cafes. Yeah, they're called coffee shops. Yeah, you need to go in, you get your little. I. I uh, I enjoyed the hot chocolate there. So you go in and you can, you know, different places have different setups, but it's like you go to the little bar and they've got all the different pot there and you just pick out your pot and you can borrow a pipe or a bong or whatever, or you can just buy pre-rolled joints. And one of my favorite experiences was sitting outside at one of those places and there were a group of us. And I think we had, you know, bought, I mean, the joints are huge. So you just buy one of them for the entire you know, five people at the table and we're sitting there outside and we're watching a car get towed and they had seven cops to tow the car. (laughs) And I was like, this is so bizarre that we're sitting here and there's more police over there dealing with that. And nobody gives a crap that we're sitting here smoking pot. Isn't that nice? Well, and I'm sure the argument against it will be who wants to live by that because of of the odor. But uh, look, I don't know much about hookah bars. Yeah, but those are legal, and they—I gotta believe it. <laughs> There's an odor, sure, coming from the but bar. But I mean, you can still smoke in the casinos in Vegas, and most of them have air filtration systems that are pretty damn good. Yeah. So there's always that. I don't know. It's like who wants to live next to a bar? They're loud. I'd like to live next to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Our our buddy Stephen Cruiser told me, you know, for years his place was in walking distance of a neighborhood bar. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, that would be so great. But then yeah. part of me believes 
Uh, oh man, that would be terrible because I would become the town alcoholic. I'd be the town drunk. If I could walk to the bar yeah. every day, I, yeah. I really don't drink all that much. Huh. Just when I see friends. Oh, okay. Then it's, you know, drink, 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 drink. Oh, it's only two o'clock in the morning. Why are you guys going to bed? <laughs> but to be able to walk to the bar. Oh, I can do man. it. You can? Yeah, I can probably walk to 15 bars. Really? Yeah. Mm, it's different for a girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you walk <laughs> sure. to the bar by yourself? Yeah. You do? Yes. Sit at the end of the bar by yourself? No. Well, that's what no, I mean. No, I would walk to the bar by myself to go meet people. No. No, I would walk to the bar by myself and sit at the bar by myself and yeah, drink okay. by myself. No. Because I'm a glasses half empty kind of cat. <laughs> sit in my own misery drinking a beer by myself. <laughs> it's good times. You should try it. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about uh, manufacturing drugs. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's hard to find uh, a talent pool that doesn't have something uh, questionable on their on their drug test. Right. No, and it's getting to the point where we're now considering hiring, you know, ex felons. Yeah. People are just coming right out of prison. I don't have a problem with that. No, depending on the the crime. Sure. I'm not saying like let's bring in a bunch of murderers and rapists, but. You know, minor drug offenses. I don't have a problem with that. As long as they show up to work. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? And I don't know. I, I believe, and I'd have to look this up, but I believe that you're not eligible for welfare, which is what we have to compete against a lot of the time. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, what you find, and I, I, if I remember correctly, it was like 10 years ago. A local television station in Detroit busted a bunch of Chrysler workers in the parking lot smoking pot. <laughs> they mm. caught them on camera. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me if these people are doing it at home, as long as they aren't high at work or, or doing it yeah. at work. And then operating a fork truck. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not what you want. No. No, nobody wants that. And I can't imagine. I mean, I guess there are people that are stupid enough to do that, to get high and then go operate heavy machinery. But I don't know. They're almost taking themselves out then. Right. So. Well, what else you want to talk about? Well, pe speaking of people that will do dumb shit, Joy Reid <laughs> is uh, back in the news because... <laughs> <laughs> People found more stuff on her blog. <laughs> I, I can't believe this. I can't believe I missed her blog. I know. It sounds actually pretty good. <laughs> good for a well, laugh. It's, it's crazy that some of the stuff that she had said years ago, it, you know, it, it's like, it, I can't remember who had it because it's not in the article that I shared with you from the mm -hmm. Washington Examiner, but I had read a couple other pieces. might have been a National Review. Somebody wrote about it, too. She had praised Pat Buchanan. Really? Yeah. And For I can't what? remember if it was about the, his his position on the wars or or whatever. You know, you it might have been about immigration. That's the thing. I'm starting to wonder was has Joy just flipped her politics because she figured it would get her further? Because she's in the uh, Washington Examiner piece about all this of uh, Katie Leach. Um, she says, uh, MSNBC host Joy Reid apologized Friday for the recent wave of old blog posts that resurfaced this week, including one in which she compared Senator John McCain to the Virginia Tech shooter and others that pushed 9-11 conspiracy theory and promoted anti-Semitic policies. So uh, the 9-11 conspiracy theory thing is some movie that she it was like, everybody should go watch this and Alex Jones is somehow related to it. I don't know if he was a producer on it or whatever, but it's basically, you know, that the our, our government knew ahead of time that that was coming and they let it happen. So mm -hmm. she's out there. Hey, go watch this. <laughs> It'll make you think. Right. So it's just bizarre that she was into stuff that is not typical of lefties being into, although there are some lefties who are 9-11 truthers, of course. Oh, yeah. 
but promoting Alex Jones's stuff. That's uh, usually a bridge too yeah. far. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she's at least acknowledging that. I mean, she's not denying that she wrote these things now. Mm. She does not say, I genuinely don't believe that I wrote that. She's actually kind of just, oh, it was a long time ago. And I've evolved. And she called Megan McCain to apologize for what she said oh, about her Oh, of course, Megan McCain would take that phone call, I bet. Oh, of course. I wonder if Megan McCain would take a call from a staffer from the Trump administration. Oh, well, no. The, whoever it was that supposedly said, you know, he's going to die. Any, he's dying anyway. I think she did take a phone call from. Oh, she did. Oh, yeah. I thought I, I. Well, that's 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 nice then, because I thought I saw a story where she claimed that she didn't actually take the call or maybe the the the, the staffer claimed that they would make a public apology and never did or so i can't remember it's hard to <laughs> track all this shit to be honest well it's it. just so stupid well the uh, stuff i'm supposed to be outraged about i don't really get outraged because i it i'm a dude i don't get offended about stuff mm. so I, I don't know. I know imagine that it is possible not to be offended <laughs> especially on other people's behalf yeah that stuff is just insane. Do you really think that John McCain is just sitting at home wor worrying about whether or not you're going to defend his honor? I mean, this is a man, it, it, you know, he's, he has a hand in the whole Steele dossier. Yeah. We've got to get that to everybody. And, like, I learned this week something that I didn't know about that. I thought Steele had knocked it off after the FBI told him to pound sand because they found out he was leaking to the media mm. and thus creating, like, this echo chamber of circular information where I make up a whole bunch of stuff and then I run to you to write about it and then I say, oh, look, Fingers is backing up my story. No, it's the same story. <laughs> it's nothing new. It's not corroborating evidence. It all came from one person. But apparently Steele was still at it after the election was over. Mm. And there's some theorizing that this is where um, that CrowdStrike then uses his information to say, oh, it was the Russians that hacked the DNC <laughs> because that comes out in December, which is when he had issued these other memos. And that's when John McCain got involved. He got these memos after the election mm -hmm. that Steele was still working on it, not getting paid, but he was so devoted to taking down Trump that he's diligently just off working. And, and so they, these go to a McCain aide. And I believe the guy like flew to London to go get them. Wow. So, is it any wonder that the people in the Trump world have a bone to pick with him? <laughs> I mean, he's as dedicated to the demise of Donald Trump as Hillary Clinton was. Yeah. So it so Joy Reid apologizes. Yes, she's apologized, and she still has her show, and it was uh, trending on Twitter this it, morning. It reminds me of uh, you know how I'm a South Park fan. Yes. Uh, the the BP oil spill episode of South Park where the CEO just comes over and over <laughs> again. I'm sorry. I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> over and over again. That's all it is. And she keeps her job. <laughs> oh my god. It's amazing. It, it, it's absurd. It's absolutely and Hugh absurd. Hewitt almost lost his job at MSNBC for what oh, I had the story in front of me. But they, they, they were talking about firing Hugh Hewitt. Mm hmm. Yes, for uh, for lobbying he, the EPA head because the, the, they're buddies and his son works over there. Yeah. There's a polluted site near Hewitt's home in California, and so Hugh Hewitt was lobbying for the EPA had to do something about it uh, and they were they were talking about firing him at MSNBC for that meanwhile you co you come across this this website this blog of Joy Reid she could do practically we could find posts from this site where she wrote you know what i uh i'm a cannibal mm -hmm. <laughs> i like the taste of human flesh <laughs> and i have drank the blood of a virgin sacrifice we killed her in the backyard. Oh, no. You know, she she may have done that, but... I'm deeply sorry. Sorry. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Enjoy Reed World. Unbelievable.
Oh my god! I mean, at this point, okay, she said, uh, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but Jews should be relocated from Israel back to Europe." I believe she did say that. Uh, the the McCain thing. What what are the other things? The outrageous things that she said in her blog. Do you remember off the top of your head that she's uh, well, gotten away with? I pulled up a story from um, the Daily Wire. They have a list of them. <laughs> So she, it says uh, in a post from 2008, Reed wrote about a house that McCain bought in 1986 where he allegedly used a fake name on blueprints when he was added onto, onto a home and then he, that he bought so the project wouldn't gain media attention. And then at the bottom of the post, she, she attacked his mental faculties, writing, fast forward to 2007 when the media caught wind of what would soon become clear. John McCain has a problem remembering it, how many houses he has and even what kind of car he drives. So then she also posted uh, a poster of him. They called him a traitor. Is that right? Poster for John McCain as a traitor and Lindsey Graham as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she attacked Cindy McCain, I believe, mm. uh, saying that she was addicted to painkillers. Interesting, but there was something about um, about her and and Israel, I believe. But I just don't see it in this in this post. Okay. What originally got her into trouble, though? I can't remember. See, this is I, it was it, every, homophobic this, every, stuff. Yeah, okay, the homophobic there. stuff. It's like every day we're bombarded with different shit, and it gets to the point where I just lose track of it all. Mm-hmm. I believe it was originally the homophobic stuff, but there were, I feel like there was something before that too that had happened that had come to light months ago, and then the same guy that had found these posts found more posts, and it was a left winger. Yeah. That did all of that. And before the, uh, I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> it was I'm hacked. I've been hacked. Yes, and and we've asked <laughs> the FBI to investigate, which still <laughs> nobody has been able to corroborate whether or not the FBI was brought in. And so she she lied about that, and she'll just be able to turn to the FBI. I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah. I <laughs> lied to you. But yeah. I'm sorry. And then, and then she'll sit there all day talking about how evil everybody that lied to the FBI was from the Trump team. I wonder, w was she on this week? Oh, yeah. I wonder if she was... Uh, Join the chorus of people that are upset that Trump leaked the jobs report. Oh, I don't know. Ahead of time. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well. Possibly. I mean, that was a big deal. I think we need more sound effects on the show. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I dig just... Uh, I'm deeply sorry. I dig doing yeah. that. Here's what she said that she agreed with Pat Buchanan on, and this was from the National Review. Mm. So this is from February 7th, 2006, which in this may or may not have been written by a time-traveling Russian hacker. <laughs> so Western commentators should give up trying to lecture the Muslim world about adopting secular values of freedom of speech and democracy. As Pat Buchanan says all the time, we really should just leave them the hell alone and do business on the oil and whatever else we're trading and let the Muslim world develop on its own. So to you and I, that doesn't sound that controversial, but to the MSNBC audience, holy shit, that's akin to like, Trump's alleged Muslim ban. <laughs> Raising, you know, I agree with Pat Buchanan. I can't believe that's not a fireable offense. I know, I know. <sighs> oh, and she'd also trashed Hillary. Mm. So, yeah. Well, see, it's it's too bad that all of these MSNBC mil, uh, media types are are so insulated because they should people should be pounding Rachel Maddow on a daily basis. Do you mm -hmm. agree with Joy? What do you think yeah. of these comments? No. Are you fine with another MSNBC host that used to hold these views? Yeah. Over and over again, these questions need to be asked of Rachel Maddow. I think Rachel's owed reparations. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, all good for Joy for being able to hang on to a job. I, I, I just wonder what's next. This is very yeah. bright Bardian, the drip, 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 drip. Yes, it is. Well, it's just funny that he, I, 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 I don't know why there's still any kind of uh, motivation at this point to look into her old blogs. Do you really think something's going to happen to her? She must be one of the few people over there that is drawing a, enough of an audience that they're scared to lose her. I mean, the, yeah. the May numbers came out, and I, I don't think that they included the weekends, but the, the primetime shows, once again, Fox is murdering <laughs> MSNBC and CNN, forget about it. Mm-hmm. I think there are old Billy Mays infomercials that are drawing more people in and watching <laughs> CNN. And the funny thing is, the, the whole video that we played earlier from the, the Republican Party uh, calling out CNN, I never considered John King someone who was incredibly partisan. Oh, yeah. But it's been a while since I've watched CNN. But I never... When, when flaming libs come to mind on CNN, I wouldn't think John King immediately. Well, you got to go back and watch the the compilation that some genius put together of all the reactions on election night 2016. Was he misty? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, they're in the toilet. If they lose their, um, their lock on all of the airports... Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> screwed. But no, you look at those numbers and you're like, wow. C- I mean, this is, this is freaking CNN. The fact that MSNBC is beating CNN is amazing. Yeah, and, and by a lot. Yeah. So this, it was uh, Forbes had this, right? The right. total audience for Fox, primetime is 2.381 million. Mm-hmm. Like MSNBC, 1.384 million. And CNN, 835,000. <laughs> It's amazing. And the narrative for a long time was, well, yeah, Fox is getting the um, drawing more numbers, but it's all the blue hairs. Well, not according to that Forbes report. Well, no, that's Fox business. So they said among viewers 25 to 54, the group most coveted by. um, Oh, no, you're right. Okay, FNC. I thought it was Fox business for some reason. So Fox took uh, Fox beats MSNBC in viewers aged 25 to 54. So, I mean, and I, CNN's uh, pathetic. CNN, do you want to talk about the blue hairs? <laughs> so, of that demo, of their 835,000, only 265,000 are under the age of 54. I mean, there could be some 18 to 25 year olds in there, but. And they're all at airports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if this captures people that um, DVR stuff. I don't know if this is if it encompasses all of that because anymore people watch television on their schedule well where cnn is strong is it's their internet numbers Mm. Uh, their their website people go to cnn.com for news much more than they do fox or msnbc but the i mean the the nightly cable shows it's a joke Mm -hmm. i I mean I, i mean honestly you could put a test pattern up on cnn (laughs) <laughs> and get those kind of numbers. I, I, you would think at some point, I mean, I, I know that they believe that Anderson Cooper is well-respected, but mm. they could lose Anderson Cooper tomorrow and, and replace him with uh, with us. We'll do the Enough Already Hour on, on uh, CNN at 8 o'clock. I bet we could draw as crappy ratings as they do. Oh, certainly. It's crazy. It's freaking CNN. <laughs> well, they've lost it, and there seems to be no no introspection on their part. They're moving Andrew Cuomo, who's a disaster, from the morning to the evening. Or excuse me, Chris Cuomo. He's getting the nine o'clock slot. They don't get. It's not. It ain't the messenger. It's the message. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from that the clips that you played for that from that GOP commercial. That's all CNN. Yeah. Yeah, they can't handle it. And then we've got, you know, until the 12th, on the 12th, we get to see how they're going to react to the North Korea summit. 
And then when this inspector general's report finally comes out, Lord knows how they're going to spin that because it's not looking good for them. Who runs CN? Is it still Zucker? I believe so. Be interesting to see when he took over and compare the numbers. Jeff Zucker, right? Mm hmm. Compare the numbers uh, where they were when he took over versus where they are now. Yeah, I would guess they've gone down oh, dramatically. I would, I would think so. Wasn't he responsible for the whole debacle with uh, late night television over at NBC? You might be right. This guy sounds like he's a disaster. Well, and and it was it was CNN that Donna Brazil was working for, right? When she passed the questions, yeah, on to Hillary. I wonder where Donna is. I think she's in hiding. Think about that. She passed questions on to the, the Hillary campaign. She apologized and she's disappeared. Look at all the, the shit <laughs> that's come out about Joy Reid. And she's still plugging away with her well, show at MSNBC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Donna got the boot. She had to she had to leave CNN though because she took over the, the DNC. Yeah. Remember when they threw Debbie <laughs> Debbie out on the eve of the uh, the convention? That was glorious. Oh, that was so beautiful. I remember I was on the train going down to the DNC because it was in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. Mm. And I was sitting behind a mother and a daughter who were all decked out in their Bernie gear. <laughs> and I just, I felt so bad for them. I'm like, you misguided fools. He's, you know, because at that point they're like, oh, you know, maybe he'll fight her on the convention floor and all of this. And they're not just going to push him to the side. They're going to take him seriously. And no, no, they're not. And they were talking about Debbie Wasserman Schultz and how happy they were now that Donna Brazil was taking over as if that was going to give Bernie Sanders a prayer, like a chance in hell of getting anywhere in the Hillary <laughs> campaign. And I said, you guys. I said, I'm sorry, I, I've, I've been overhearing you. And I pretended to be kind of sympathetic. And I was just like, Donna Brazil's a Clinton hack. She worked for them for years. She passed Hillary the damn questions. <laughs> like, have you guys not read the WikiLeaks stuff? That's the reason that Debbie's out is because of the stuff that's come out in these emails. And, and there's Donna Brazil talking mad shit on Bernie Sanders in those emails. They were so crestfallen. <laughs> <laughs> No, it can't be. Yes, yes, it is. Did, did I ever tell watch? you? Did I ever tell you I had Debbie Wasserman Schultz's ass a foot and a half away from my face once? No, I'm sorry. Why did that happen? I was covering the. Uh, I was in New Hampshire for the primary up there, back in, oh, yeah? in 2012, and I was in the media hotel. I was actually doing work for the Roger Hedgecock show okay and then doing my you know little dog and pony show at ftr radio and i was sitting in a chair in the hotel lobby and I, you know it was a it was a busy lobby and people were being interviewed and there was a lot of noise directly behind me and i was trying to ignore it because i was editing audio i had my earbuds in and i turned to my left and there was this ass uh -huh. in polyester pants <laughs> I'm like, oh my, it's like right in my face. It's like, what is this? Over my left shoulder. And then I looked up and I saw from behind the hair. Oh. <laughs> I knew exactly who it was. There was a gaggle of reporters around her. I was like, oh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz ass. <laughs> there it is. It's in all of its glory. <laughs> so I've got that going for me, which is nice. Yeah, it's a good one. You should write a ch children's book about that. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my blog for people to discover 10 years from now. Yes, please do. <laughs> it looked like she had done Buns of Steel, though. I'll give her credit. Oh, great. But, but the hair. The hair. You can recognize that hair from a mile away. You think that's naturally curly? Or do you think that she goes in and, and requests that? Perm? No, I think you wouldn't request that. Yeah. No. No. No, it's awful. 
No, she should shave her head and wear wigs. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Well, good Lord, we've been talking for over an hour. Yes. Anything else you want to get to before we call it a day? Uh, let me look through this. Do you want to talk about our the FBI agent? Oh, this is this is unbelievable. So there's an FBI agent and he is in Minnesota at a bar. And he's he's cutting a rug, Tracy. Mhm. And apparently, and this is this is a huge no-no. He had his gun on him. No, he's in bar. Denver. Sorry. Oh, is, he's at Denver. I thought he was in in, in uh no, Mile High Spirits Distillery and Tasting Bar in oh. Denver. It's a big no-no for any law enforcement officer to have a gun in a bar while they're drinking. It's a it's a huge no-no. I had a friend of mine back in the 90s that worked for the county sheriff's office that brought his gun in. And he wasn't really drinking. But he was on the dance floor and he had his gun tucked like this guy in his belt behind his back and someone saw it through the through a shirt and they called the police mm. they're like holy holy shit this guy's got a gun on him and he's on the dance floor and it ended up costing him his career oh wow so this guy's an fbi agent you know the the feds they're gonna do what they can to to take care of their own he's out there and they're he's dancing uh, on the dance floor in, in a circle they've cleared the dance floor for this guy and i can't figure out why because he's an awful dancer <laughs> what it looks like the weird part to me it looks like they're on astroturf doesn't it yeah and they do a backflip or he does a backflip and the gun falls out of his trousers and onto yes. the dance floor and when he goes to pick it up the gun goes off so yeah. I, I actually have video of this and obviously you can't see it but this is the, the commentary that goes along with All it right, spirits are saying the gun went off from someone's pocket this is video of a man at a Denver nightclub cutting loose on the dance floor, but something else is loose too. As he flips, his handgun flies out of its holster to the floor, then accidentally going off as he picks it up. Watch again. As he reaches, there's that muzzle flash, the bullet striking a man in the crowd. Just have a party shot says inside the bar. Party shot in the lake. Callers to 911 early Saturday morning describing the man with the gun. Okay, white male tan pants, dark blue long sleeve button. Up. Who turns out to be a special agent with the FBI. Oops. <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's like the gun accidentally goes off. No, he must have touched the trigger with his finger. Yeah. He's going for it real quick because he's like, oh, shit. He comes. And I don't think it was in a holster. No, he clumsily grabbed for his gun and must have pulled the trigger. And he shot a dude in the leg. Yeah. The foot. I mean, it's it's the gun is on the ground when it yeah. goes off. Well, what a friggin' idiot! And what's funny for some reason this 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 video was taken and they they blur out his face. Yeah. In the video, I was like, for what? <laughs> Why are they blurring out his face? Would they blur um, out my face if I took out a gun and I shot someone? Probably not. In a bar? My face would be all over the internet. Be on mm. Joy Reid's blog. <laughs> they got the, the video. His face is blurred out. Yeah, I don't know why. That, that is a good question. And he, and he should have been arrested immediately. Mm-hmm. But law enforcement is looking into it. Yeah. If we need an investigation. <laughs> If I were shot in the leg, I'd be like, arrest that motherfucker. Yes. I don't care if he's a, an FBI agent. Well, and it's weird. They say uh, ABC News has the, the story. And they said the incident is being investigated by, by the Denver Police Homicide Unit. Did he kill somebody? <laughs> what? I mean, it says in the article that the person, you know, the person went to the hospital and they're in good condition. Then why the hell is homicide? <laughs> investigating they're bored it's been, i guess so it's been a slow week at homicide in denver <laughs> maybe and everybody's just high out of their minds and non-violent there oh i'd so be bring... suing everybody if, if this guy doesn't go to jail 
We'll probably never hear about the story again. You're right. It'll just disappear. That was, The audio footage was from Good Morning America, by the way. Oh, of course. So I want to, you know, source the that's material. A, yeah, that's a happy story to lead the morning with. <laughs> Unbelievable. Everybody's turned so grim. Well, we're living in an awful world, Tracy. Donald Trump's president of the United States. I know. Everything's terrible. He's leaking out sensitive information <laughs> via his Twitter feed. We need to open a congressional investigation into that immediately. You tanked the entire market. Uh, nope. Wow. Okay, I think I'm spent. Are you? Yeah, you? I just wanted to look real quick and see if there was anything else to talk about. I can finish the, uh, while you're doing that, I'll, there's another 30 seconds to the story. On. Denver police are now investigating. He's potentially in big trouble for a number of, of, of you know, potential violations, both administrative and otherwise. So it, 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 this is a great example of clearly what you should not be doing if you're armed. The man who was shot went to a hospital but is expected to be okay. The FBI this morning isn't commenting on their agent who could still face criminal charges. For Good Morning America, Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Denver. Could <laughs> he yeah. did a backflip? His gun fell on the floor and he shot someone with it. <laughs> I'm. Here's the thing, too. You're not going to know his blood alcohol level. Oh right. So that'll be difficult to prove whether he had been drinking, uh, you know. Because well, you would th you don't think they would have breathalyzed him? I mean, I can't tell if they just let him leave. They must have. They're still investigating. Are you kidding me? I'm sure he flashed well, his they badge. They always say that. I'm sure he flashed his badge. FBI. No. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, you're FBI. Uh, just get get out of here. We'll call you an Uber. Hmm. I mean, it wouldn't take much to interview any of the, the wait staff there to find out if he had ordered alcoholic drinks. Yeah. Even if they if they can't get his blood alcohol level on record. I mean, for, for crying, but this is amazing. If, if that happened to me, if they had video footage of me doing a back, back, back flip, mm -hmm. which, by the way, would be a miracle, but, and, and then a, a gun falling out of my pants where it shouldn't have been, and I shot someone accidentally, I'd be in jail. Yes. Do not pass go. Straight to jail. And they're, oh, homicides investigating. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Did you find anything else? Well, I thought it was funny. So Ben Rhodes, who worked for Obama, he was, uh, what was he? He's national, deputy national security advisor. Uh, and a real piece of shit, if you ask me. Hmm. He's got a book coming out. So the world as it is and uh, p parts of this are leaking out. And so Maureen Dowd, who is uh, no conservative, right? she wrote a piece for the New York Times, an opinion piece. Obama was just too good for us. <laughs> so this is her take on this. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. She doesn't really say if she's read an advanced copy or, or whatever, but she's seen some some uh, some pieces from Rhodes's forthcoming book. So she says President Obama always found us wanting. We were constantly disappointing him. <laughs> <laughs> he would tell us to do the right thing and then sigh and purse his lips when his instructions were not followed. <laughs> <laughs> So she says, shortly after Donald Trump was elected, Rhodes writes in his new book, The World As It Is, Obama asked his aides, what if we were wrong? <gasps> but in his next breath, the president made it clear that what he meant was, what if we were wrong in being so right? <laughs> what if we were just too good for these people? <sighs> oh, my God. So she says he's not really acknowledging any flaws, but simply wondering if we were even more benighted than he thought. He's saying that, sadly, we were not in, not enlightened enough for the monumentous changes wrought by the smartest people in the world <laughs> <laughs> or even evolved enough for the first African-American president. 
quote, sometimes I wonder whether I was 10 or 20 years too early, Obama muses to his aides. Oh, my God. She said, we just weren't ready for his amazing <laughs> awesomeness. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. His his reputation and legacy are just getting destroyed. And it's it's long overdue in my opinion. The the GOP is so incompetent and and yet his presidency is being destroyed. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that they were a competent political party? No. It, it's really quite pathetic. It's it's so pathetic. Honestly, and I can't remember who it was on Twitter. I think it might have been Stephen Miller, known as Red Steez, had put up this picture. <laughs> he was like, here's all that's left of the displays for the Obama Presidential Library. And it's the picture of Obama holding up a selfie stick, taking a picture of himself. He's <laughs> like, that's it. That's all that's left of his presidency at this point. And it's fairly accurate. It would be nice if we got a full repeal of Obamacare. Yeah. That would be nice. Well, somebody was saying that this morning. It was Rick Santorum. It was on um, what, whichever State of the Union, whichever is the CNN Sunday morning show, saying that, you know, they could go for that potentially. And there's also the showdown that's looming that we all forget about when, remember when they pass that insane CR and not a budget where mm -hmm. they – we're going to spend more money. And then Trump signed it and said, this is never happening again. Well, if he's to be believed, that showdown comes at the end of September. That's when the money runs out. Oh, September 30th. Mitch, Mitch McConnell is going to shit a brick. Because wow. they're so terrified of government shutdown. Yeah. And Santorum said, don't be surprised if he shuts it down over the wall. I think it was Santorum. But he wants that damn wall. And if he's not getting it, he's going to shut it down. <laughs> right before the election. Yep. And they're going to panic like crazy. Instead he, of just sitting back and saying, hey, look, unemployment is down. You know, <laughs> unemployment's down. Job numbers are up. GDP is up. Everything's looking good. You know, we can don't try to rock get, the boat. Yeah. Let's keep moving. No, we're going to panic like crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. The government's going to shut down. Just like it does every weekend. <laughs> and on snow days. It's almost like he's planning all this out. Imagine that. But he, nah, it can't possibly be true. He's a dummy. He's, yeah, he's a big, big dummy. He's just stumbled into all this. <laughs> it's like if uh, Jed Clampett's son became president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Jethro? Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> he he quit on the idea of being a big Hollywood producer. <laughs> He's gonna be president so you know, of the United uh, States. I think I want to be the president. <laughs> I'll probably do that job uh, if I get away from the cement pond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for our younger listeners, Google Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> well, they had a movie like what ten years ago, wasn't there? A Beverly Hillbillies movie. Oh. No, I, if you say so. I think the guy who played uh, Ernest was Chet Clampett. Oh, God. please be upon him. <laughs> he was great. I love those stupid movies. Well, now Ernest is president. Tracy. There you go. And look, er themes, themes, themes. Ernest goes to the White House. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Can that be the name of this week's show? Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, anything else? No, I think we've talked enough. All right. You can find the Enough Already podcast on Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, iTunes, and YouTube. Yeah, so we're also on BitChute, which is the um, the what? backup for YouTube. What is Bit BitChute? BitChute. It's run on the blockchain, and they don't believe in censorship over there. Oh, nice. So in case they ever kick us off of uh, YouTube, everything is backed up over on BitChute. 
They'll check and a that lot out. of people from the right are moving over to there or hedging their bets and putting all their content there as well. Wow. Okay. So check that out on, on BitChute. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it for this week. Tracy, final thoughts? Oh, I just, I hope the IG report drops this week. And I, I plan on reading all 5,000 pages of it or however long it ends up being. I'm looking forward to the Donald Trump tweet. <laughs> looking forward to the IG report coming out <laughs> yeah. in half an hour. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's least classified information. We need to have an investigation immediately. <laughs> What's there to investigate? He saw the job numbers Thursday night and tweeted about them Friday morning. Case closed. End of story. Go find that FBI agent that shot people in the foot <laughs> at a bar in Denver. <laughs> no, we need to spend $16 million on that, Tracy. <laughs> we need to investigate. Uh, uh, all right. We'll be back next week with an all-new Enough Already. <laughs>